Yogis are practicing Satipatthana Vipassana meditation. Every day we recite, every evening we recite one passage after the Dhamma talk. This passage is from the discourse called The Four Foundations of Mindfulness. Mahasadipanana Sutta, Odisha Bali. This passage is just a summary of the four foundations of mindfulness. But it is important that those who practice the foundations of mindfulness or vipassana meditation understand this passage correctly and clearly so then we have to explain this passage was dipatana odesa the method of practice of mindfulness or the Four Foundations of Mindfulness was discovered by the Buddha. Buddha practiced this method himself and got the best results from this practice. And then for 45 years, he taught the Four Foundations of Mindfulness many times After his death, these methods were collected and recorded in what is known as Pali Canon. The instruction given at Vipassana retreats are all based on this Mahasatipatthana Sutta which contains this passage. The first sentence is, Ikaya no ayam bhikkhui mego satana visodhiya. This is the only way bhikkhus for the purifications of beings, etc. and the Four Foundations of Mindfulness. So at the very beginning, Buddha said, Ekaya no mego, this is the only way. The Four Foundations of Mindfulness or the practice of mindfulness is the only way for the purifications of beings here, Buddha said, this is the only way. Now, the Pali words for this translation is Ekayano. Ekayano is composed of two parts, Eka and Ayana. Ayana means way, path or road, and Eka means one. So Ekayana literally means one way. This one way is interpreted to mean the way which has no fox, the way which has no branch. There is just one way, and if you tread this way, you will surely reach your destination. With the confidence you are walking on this path, 
there are no misleading no misleading branches of this way the way which has no branches And another meaning is that there is a way to be taken by one. There is a way to be taken by the individual only. That means when you are treading on this path, when you are treading on this way, you are alone. You have no companion. Because you make progress or you do not make progress depending on your own capabilities. Some yogis' is, uh, capabilities are exceptional. They make progress very fast. Some they, their capabilities are weak, so they need to practice more. Depending on our own capabilities, we make progress or we do not make progress. So this is the only way to be taken by the individual only. And also, Ekayana is interpreted to mean the way of the one. Here, yeah, the one means the Buddha. The Buddha was the best of beings, so he was called the one. And this is the only way discovered and taught by the Buddha. So this is called the way of the one, <clears throat> the way of the Buddha. You are following this path. And this Satipatthana path is only existing in Buddha's disposition, Ika Ayana, Ayana existing, this method is only existing in this Buddha's disposition, and also it is interpreted to mean the only way, it is the only way, there is no other way for the purifications of beings, and so on. It is a way that goes solely to Nirvana. So every day you recite the method you are practicing, Ikaya no Ayambekui Mego, Remember this meaning, very meaningful. <coughs> Need to remember Ekayana translation. Can you follow me? The way, this way has no branches. This way is no branches. This way has no fox. This is the only way to be taken by individual. This way is taken by the individual only. It is a way of Buddha. It is the way of Buddha. This path is only existing 
in Buddha's dispensation. This path is existing in Buddha's dispensation. It is the way that goes solely to Nirvana. It is the way that goes solely to Nirvana. So these are the meanings of Ekayana. There is no branch, no fox, only one way. You believe this way, you believe this path, <clears throat> and it is a way of Buddha, and with confidence with the tri triple gem and practice, you are practicing this path, <clears throat> you are practicing this method, you are trodding on this path. Now, with regard to the translation, the only way there are two questions. One is that here, all foundations of mindfulness means mindfulness only, but there are other factors of the Noble Eightfold Path. So are the other factors also not the way to purification of beings? Question. Are the other factors also not the way to purification of beings? Answer. They are also the way to purification of beings, but they do not exist without mindfulness. <clears throat> so when mindfulness is mentioned, they are virtually mentioned. That is, although mindfulness alone is mentioned here, we should understand that all the other seven factors that are concomitant with the noble path are also implied. The other question raised by people, why did the Buddha say, this is the only way? And there are other ways for the beautification of beings. They argue that there are different roads to reach a city. And just as there are different roads to a city, there must be different ways to reach purification of beings or to reach Nirvana. Some people do not like this, or they thought Buddha would not have said, this is the only way. Sometimes analogies are not really correct. It is true that there are different roads to reach this town. The point here is that though there exist many roads leading to the town, they are all similar in that the um, roads, they are not marshes or forest. They may be tar road, cement road, or dirt road one lane, two lane, three lane, or four lanes. 
one way or two ways, lighted or not, white or narrow, etc. But they are roads. Nevertheless, and only by means of a road can the town be reached. So road is called the only way to reach the town. They are roads, they are not marshes or forests, and so the road is the only way to reach the town. There may be different roads, but they are roads. <clears throat> Just as with the roads, so also with the practice of medit uh, practice of mindfulness, there are different ways of practice mindfulness. For example, my mindfulness of breathing, anapana, mindfulness of pulses of the body, idiyapata or mindfulness of feeling with an anupasana, or mindfulness of mind state, or my, mindfulness of the five aggregates of clinging, or mindfulness of internal and external basis, etc. Regardless of the method of practice of mindfulness adopted, they are practice of mindfulness. They are not any other practice, such as the practice of samatha, tranquility, meditation, or practice of morality or generosity, etc. They are practice of mindfulness, and they lead to the establishing of right mindfulness that leads finally to the realizations of Nirvana. So there may be different ways of practicing mindfulness, but they must be mindfulness. Only one, only mindfulness can lead us to the attainment of Nirvana. Also, if we say physical exercise is the only way to build up, to build big muscle, I think no one would object to that. If you want to build big muscle, you have to do physical exercise. Without physical exercise, you cannot hope to build muscle. But physical exercise can take different forms, such as weightlifting or using machine and so on. In the same way, mindfulness is the only way to reach Nirvana. But mindfulness may take different forms. Even in this discourse on the foundations of mindfulness, mindfulness practice is taught in 21 ways. Again, okay. anapana, mindfulness of breathing, idiyabhata, mindfulness of pulsions of the body, mindfulness of clear comprehension, sambazinya, reflection on the repulsiveness of the body, reflection on the material elements, nice symmetry, contemplation, and vinanupasana, contemplations of feeling, contemplations of consciousness, five hindrances, the five aggregates of clinging, the six internal and external bases, seven factors of enlightenment, and the Four Noble Truths. 
There are 21 different kinds of mindfulness practice to choose from. You know these 21 ways because you are practicing Siddhiputana meditation. So it is correct to say that this is the only way. So mindfulness is the only way. People may argue here because the word used here is ekayana, one way. But in another place in the Dhammapada Pali text, Buddha said clearly, this alone is the way and there is no other way for the purity of wisdom in Dhammapada. So we cannot argue that Buddha said there is any other way. Buddha expressly said that this alone is the way and there is no other way. So we must accept that this is the only way for the purifications of beings. If we consider it with reference to the practice, it becomes clear. And you understand mindfulness is like a gut. And once the gut is removed, anything can come in. So as long as mindfulness is at the six and dose, your mindfulness is pure. No unwholesome mental states can come into your mind because mindfulness is there guarding the six and those. Once mindfulness is removed, once we lose mindfulness, all these mental defilements come in. So mindfulness is the only way to keep our mind pure. And please note here also that mindfulness is one of the eight factors of the Noble Eightfold Path described in the Dhammapada. And if the Eightfold Path is the only way, then mindfulness is surely is the only way too. Again, mindfulness may take different forms, such as mindfulness of the body, mindfulness of feeling, mindfulness of consciousness, mindfulness of Dhamma objects, and mindfulness of parts of the body, and so on. So if it is mindfulness, it is the only way for the purifications of beings. Satana Visodhya. For the purifications of beings. That means for the purifications of minds of beings. Because Bora is more concerned about the purifications of mind than purifications of the physical body. Although it does not mean that we do not take care of the cleanliness of the physical body, what is more important for us is the cleanliness of our minds. 
So the purification of beings here means purification of minds of beings. In the commentaries, it is said that personal cleanliness or cleanliness of the body. as well as the cleaning of the place are conducive to our concentration and wisdom. So we need, we also need to keep our bodies clean. We also need to keep the place where we meditate clean. Although we are not to neglect the cleanliness of the body, we should be more concerned about the cleanliness of our minds. So coming to the retreat, All the minds must be pure and clean, so it is very tough. It is our job to clean every mental state is not too easy. So we have to concern about our cleanliness of our minds. So here the Buddha said that mindfulness is the only way for the purifications of minds of beings. With this passage, Buddha mentioned the benefits we will get from the practice of mindfulness. The first benefit the Buddha mentioned is Satana Visodhya, purifications of mind. Then Buddha said, Soka Bridewana Samadikamaya, for the overcoming of sorrow and lamentation. If we want to overcome sorrow and lamentation, or if we want to overcome crying a lot, we should practice mindfulness. Mindfulness is the only way to overcome sorrow and lamentation. Here, yes, sorrow is a mental state. Lamentation is crying aloud through sorrow and saying these things and saying that. To overcome sorrow and lamentation, also, we should practice the four foundations of mindfulness. Try to take the natural phenomena as they really are. Don't take wrong. Take the object quickly to capture the natural phenomena as they really are. Dokha Domana Sanna Atingamaya. For the disappearance of pain and grief. Pain here means physical pain. And grief means mental pain. Depression. Evil. Hatred, all these are included in the word grief. 
Domanasa for the overcoming and disappearance of pain and grief, we should practice the four foundations of mindfulness. We understand. We may not conquer pain. We may not overcome pain altogether. Pain may not disappear altogether. But if we practice mindfulness, we will be able to live with pain. We will be able to accept the pain. We have another Anuroda. At one time, Venerable Anuroda was afflicted with a grave illness accompanied by painful physical sensation. However, Venerable Anuroda was able to tolerate calmly these painful sensations. A group of monks inquired how he was able to do this. Venerable Anuroda declared that he was practicing the four foundations of mindfulness. Like that of the Venerable Anuroda, our mind will not be disturbed. Our mind will not be perturbed by the physical pain. If our mind is not perturbed by physical pain, pain is virtually non-existence. So for the disappearance of pain, or for the for the overcoming of pain, we should practice mindfulness meditation. For the overcoming of grief, overcoming of evil, depression, and so on, we should practice mindfulness meditation. Dhammanasa. Grief is a mental state, and sorrow is also a mental state. They are actually connected with each other. These are mental states, and so these mental states can be overcome, or made to disappear, or can be avoided by the practice of Mindfulness. Mind cannot take two objects, cannot take two things. Mind cannot take more than one things at a time. Mind can only take one object at a time. We are lucky. If mind could take two or more things at a time, our suffering would be much greater. Since mind can take only one thing at a time, we can overcome sorrow and grief by the practice of mindfulness. Let us take anger, for example. 
Suppose you are angry with Mr. A. So long as your mind is on Mr. A, your anger will increase and you will be getting more and more angry with him because you are taking him as the object of your consciousness. But once you turn your mind from Mr. A, who is the source of your anger? You turn your mind from Mr. A to anger itself. Note sincerely, anger, anger, anger. The moment you turn your mind to anger itself, Mr. A does not exist for you at the time. He has already disappeared from your mind. When your mind is on the anger itself, and when the source of anger has disappeared, anger has to disappear also. So that way, you treat such mental state with mindfulness. Mindfulness is so reliable, sincerely to be relying upon. You treat such mental state with mindfulness, with just simple Simple mindfulness, but strong mindfulness, forceful mindfulness is needed. Anger, 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 you note continuously and meticulously, mindfulness take over. It is how you deal, we deal with what are called emotions such as attachment, anger, hatred, depression, and sorrow, whatever the mental state, we just treat it with mindfulness and try to be mindful of it. When yogi's mindfulness is really strong, this emotion, Attachment, anger, etc., we surely disappear. So, Buddha said, This is the only way to overcome sorrow and lamentation and to overcome pain and grief. So, Kabridewana Samadikamaya, Dukkha Domana Sanna Atingamaya. And then Buddha said, Nyayasa Adigamaya. This is the only way for reaching the noble path. When you study on Buddhism, you will see the word path many times. Idamesila Mega Palanyanasa Mega But, as a technical term, is a name for the combinations or group of the eight factors of the path. Right understanding, right thought, right speech, right action, right livelihood, right effort, right mindfulness, and right concentration. Eight factors of the path.
right understanding, etc., that arise at the moment of enlightenment, the type of consciousness that arises at the moment of enlightenment that is accompanied by these factors is called path consciousness, mega chitta. The word enlightenment is another technical word whose meaning is not easy to understand. We need to understand its meaning properly without definition. It is vague. It may mean different things to different person or different religions. Enlightenment for the Buddhists may be quite different from enlightenment for other religions. So when we talk about enlightenment, we should first define it according to Buddhism. Enlightenment means the eradication of mental defilements and seeing Nibbana directly, seeing Nibbana face to face at the same time. As you practice vipassana meditation and progress from one stage to another, to higher and higher stages, as the result of this vipassana practice, a time will come when in your mind a type of consciousness arises which you have not experienced experience before, that type of consciousness along with its mental concomitants is so powerful that it can eradicate mental defilements, kilesa altogether, not to come back again. At the same time, it takes Nibbana as objects. So what we mean by enlightenment is what happens at the moment, at that moment. A moment when that consciousness arises, eradicates mental defilements and takes Nirvana as object. That consciousness is called path consciousness immediately following that path consciousness are two or three moments of fruition consciousness palacheta and some may understand abhidhamma to understand this fully so for reaching the noble path simply means for gaining enlightenment. When you really reach the noble path, you become enlightened and you are able to eradicate mental defilements and you take Nirvana as object. And then the last one. Nibbanasa Sichi Kiriyaya. This is the only way for the realizations of Nibbana. It is the same thing as reaching the Nova Path. So when you reach the Nova Path, when the path consciousness arises in you, that consciousness takes Nibbana as object. That is when you are said to have realized Nibbana. So, reaching the Nova Path and realizations of Nibbana mean the same things.
so this uh, benefits these uh, meanings of the the ekayana we need to understand clearly and we need to practice uh, faithfully so we will continue next time we have to stop our discourse for today by practicing vipassana meditation by observing every phenomena occurring at the six and those by noting rising falling sitting touching stretching bending seeing hearing etc continuously and meticulously may all yogis be liberated from all suffering may all yogis realize the real peace in the very near future.